Hi, my name is Elisa. I'm a big figure skating fan. And a few days ago, I took a trip to Sochi uh, to watch the Ross Telecom Cup competition. And it was amazing. It, it still is, I'm still in Sochi right now. Uh, I filmed everything I could and I wanted to share it with you. So to get to Sochi, I had to take a plane and it takes about two, two and a half hours to get from Moscow to Sochi. And that's what I did on Sunday morning, on Saturday, Saturday morning. And uh, well, I was really excited to go. I know that the competition started on Friday and all the short programs were on Friday, but I had a very important event, uh, a very important event uh, uh, at work. So I couldn't leave on Friday, unfortunately, but Whatever, Saturday morning worked just as fine. When I got here, when I um, stepped out of the airport, I, the first thing I saw was uh, like straight ahead of me were palms, palm trees. And then I looked to the right and there were mountains. And then I just made, uh, took a breath and I, I realized that I'm breathing now. Like, I, I don't know, it's a shift of mind that happened. Um, it's not like in Moscow there is bad air and here it's good air. So there I, I was breathing uh, worse and here is better. No, it's like in Moscow I wasn't breathing at all. And here I finally realized what it is to breathe. I just had to find a cute place near a palm to just say we're here, we're here, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm nearly gonna cry, I'm waiting for my taxi, it's gonna be here in four minutes, uh, I should watch here, yeah, uh, and then I'm gonna go to the Iceberg Stadium right away, and I'm so nervous and excited at the same time, I, I, I don't know, this, um, the air here is amazing, it's so warm, I see palms, I see mountains, all at the same time, I, I don't know, it's just like I stepped in, into holiday, into right from the plane, I stepped into something amazing, into some amazing place where, I don't know, where everything is so light and warm and possible, I, I don't know, I lost my words, I just, I, I'm super excited. So I had only like 30 minutes from the moment my plane landed to the moment the program officially starts. Um, but I, I knew that like for the first half hour or so, they would be introducing the judges, some blah, blah, blah. And well, I could afford to be late for 20 minutes or so. Uh, so when I was buying the ticket, I realized that and it was okay. Uh, I took a cab, I co took a taxi right from the airport and with my bag uh, I um, traveled to the Iceberg Stadium. It was really close to the airport so it took me around 
15 minutes by the by taxi like the whole ride i was waiting for the taxi for 5 10 uh then it took me 15 to get there and then i had to walk uh around the stadium for a bit um show the ticket show my qr code uh and uh so all together it was like 40 minutes for me from the moment when i stepped out of the airport and the moment i sat uh on the chair in the iceberg stadium watching uh some guy um skating <laughs> welcoming driver ever. He was so sweet and so talkative and he really welcomed me to the city and it was so nice to talk to him. He um, told me some news about the city, like of course the things he's uh, not happy about, uh, like always. Uh, and uh, he just explained to me very carefully how to get to the stadium that I want to get to. It was just very heartwarming. So I see a huge line, so I guess I'm not late. First, it was men's program, and uh, I don't remember who was the first guy I saw, um, but I remember the second. In the second was Matteo from Italy, Matteo Rizzi. I, I forgot his last name. I'm so sorry, but he was amazing. He was, he was just something. He he was super cool. I realized that I'm his fan now, and I'm going to um, I'm going to be rooting for him at the Olympic Games if he goes there. So right now it's men's competition, there are not that many people, but I think by the evening when the girls will start will be full. I'm so excited. I, I, I'm crying. <laughs> I'm so happy. I should say that I was just extremely excited to go here, to go to Sochi, to watch the figure skaters. Um, it's been my dream for, for, for some time. Uh, now I dream to go to the Russian Championship in St. Petersburg in December, uh, but it's, it's, yeah, I dream about it, but I already have the tickets. <laughs> I have already my living arrangements in St. Pete. And the dream dream is to go to the Olympic Games, probably in Italy, uh, which is like in four years, like the next Olympic Games, to watch the figure skating competition there. It would be awesome. But for right now, I'm just I'm so happy that I'm here, that I watched all this. I'm so happy to breathe in the fresh air, to feel warm. I tried to feel uh, myself speaking also uh, in the moment. And uh, the vlog will continue with those clips. Uh, and right now I must say that I'm going to do something a little bit crazy. Well, at least it is a bit crazy for me. Uh, so I will show it to you at the end of this vlog.
that was a smart move. All I ate today was an apple oh. and a cup of coffee. Cappuccino. Okay, so as far as I understand, the D2 sector um, is like the biggest fans of figure sketching in general. They applaud to everybody, to every jump, failed or made. And it's awesome and they're so supportive. They always applaud like at all the moments that are necessary. Uh, they support the skaters. It's super cool. And they have the most um, post of the posters. They throw the toys and they are generally the most excited sector. And it's fun. <laughs> find food between the competitions and I failed greatly. There is no food at the stadium uh, and all I've had so far is an apple and a cappuccino and it's 3.30 or something like that. The good news is while I left to go to the bathroom and to find food, my bag stayed all by itself and nothing happened to it. I just didn't look good enough, well enough, the previous time. But look at the line. Okay, so I'm gonna be like 20 minutes late for the pairs competition, but who cares? Because I've got food and also a chocolate bar. Yes! from Sunday performances. On that day I decided to enjoy more and film less, uh, but still I have some clips that I want to share with you.
more time for myself. It's Monday, it's Monday morning, and that's the beauty I see on Monday morning. So I had my two meetings uh, in the co-working. The co-working was very nice, very nice. Uh, it cost me just 200 rubles. I think I've never thought of, about it before, but look, palms are just like gigantic pineapples. I'm not gonna lie to myself <laughs> and pretend that I'm gonna work today. Nah. Uh, I did a bit of it. I'm probably gonna do a bit of it a bit later. But in general, impossible. Just for me right now, it's impossible to work.
okay well so i really like the result i do i, I like how it looks that's how i imagined it i'm probably not gonna wear my glasses with it i'm probably gonna use uh, the contacts um, but i like it i like it a lot i can't wait to make wow that was cool i can't wait to make uh, different hairstyles with it uh, the girls at the hair shop told me that I should wait for a few days uh, before I put them into different hairstyles so I'm gonna do that um, I must confess in something I feel so embarrassed I'm a bit stupid <laughs> so when I was uh, booking my appointment at the hair salon I asked about the price they said it was 100 rubles per braid, per one braid, and that usually for a good hairstyle it takes around 100 braids, 100, 110. So I figured, well, that means like a thousand rubles. <laughs> so I lost a zero and uh, now it's 96 braids on my head, which costs 9,600 rubles. <laughs> I'm so ashamed, I didn't have that money, I had to manage my um, credit accounts very fast. Um, I, I have some money left for today and tomorrow to eat and stuff, but I feel so stupid. I feel so embarrassed. I'm ashamed, yeah. Jesus. So that's why I feel like I, I, I can't enjoy the hairstyle at full at the fullest because I, I really like it I like the way it looks <laughs> if it cost uh, if it had cost 1000 I would be the happiest person right now and it's not about like it's too expensive or something no um, it's just expectations versus reality and it's always like that you know if I knew from the very beginning that it was 10,000 um, well, I wouldn't have done it, yeah, but because I just don't have that money right now. But if I had money, I, I would go and do it, but mm, like I would just expect different stuff. It, it wouldn't be a surprise for me. And you know this stupid situation when you already bought something, like they, they've done the service, they did what I asked for. They, we spent there for hours already. Two wonderful young ladies braided my hair. Um, and then they say the price and you're like <laughs> you know that moment when you try to act normal like that's exactly what you expected <laughs> but inside everything is screaming like what yeah so that's what happened um i didn't show them that i was surprised i, I just paid um i managed all my money together in one card and paid <sighs> well i think it looks beautiful I really do like how it looks. I like these things. I think I'm gonna buy, not that I don't have money, but maybe uh, I will buy uh, some more of these uh, accessories and put it in my hair. I really like it. So anyway, that's my hairstyle for a month, month and a half, which is cool. Like I'm gonna spend New Year's uh, like that. I just need to get used to it a bit and I just need to leave through the fact that I just spent 10,000 instead of one.
tell you how genuinely happy I am. I love it. They do this and they go from side to side and I love it. Uh, the guilt has stepped away a little bit so I can enjoy the happiness now. It's still there, but it's much uh, smaller and I'm dealing with it, I'm still in the process, so it's okay, I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> and I love it, I love it, I love how it looks, I love how it moves. Uh, I can't wait to make different hairstyles, I can't wait to dance with it, I can't wait my husband to see and see his reaction, I really want it. day but just hours here by the sea and the sea is amazingly beautiful I'm sad that I have to leave. Uh, I really liked being... Um, being... <laughs> Hi cutie dog! <laughs> One thing that I want to do, but I haven't allowed myself to do that yet, but I think if I spent more time here I would... Um, I would come to the point where I can do that, and that is to scream. I really want to come to the seashore, uh, especially with the waves like today, and just scream together with them, because I feel like they're screaming, and there is, there is just so much I want to scream out. So I would really love to, to do that, but not this time, and it's okay. I am super grateful that I've had this trip. It's amazing. It's just. It's a miracle that uh, the price policy of the tickets was such that it would that it was wiser for me to leave on Wednesday rather than on Sunday. Uh, and it's like a gift. It's like a gift from the universe that told me, "Look, here you go. You can spend two and a half more days at this beautiful place." And it's super cool. I'm, I'm very glad I did that. <sighs> It's kind of that right now my life back in Moscow and in general my, my life uh, is not where I want it to be and it's not about like goals and going higher and stuff like that being better no it's just it's not it doesn't represent my life right now doesn't represent who I really am uh, the thing with this hair is that it is so much me right now. I, I can't even describe how I 100% feel that this is a representation of what I'm inside. It's cool. And I want more parts of my body, of my life. Um, of my activities to represent who I really am and right now it's it's not like that uh, I'm just starting to feel that I'm starting to realize that I'm in the process it's fine 
just uh, right now um, the situation is that I can only realize that I don't have uh, money to change the situation and for some of this stuff I do need money to change the situation I don't have strength for all those things uh, to change uh, some of those things as well uh, so I'm just for now I'm left with the feeling that it doesn't represent who I am and here it's like it was like a little runaway uh, and here I was free so I allowed myself to do that uh, and some other stuff I allowed myself just to be and I, I really would love that to continue but at the same time I get inspiration from this you know I've got this feeling of freedom in me thanks to this trip and now I can continue feeling it when I come back home and this energy will allow me to do some changes maybe they won't be that big they will be some micro changes but still they will help I am sure yeah so I guess that's the best thing I can derive can I say that from the trip is motivation to change something now that I realize a bit better what needs to be changed So that's the way I'm gonna finish the vlog. So it took me about three or four hours to get home and that's what my family did to me. Yeah, this family, this one right here. Say something, please. For example, how much you love me. Or how much you love your cat? <laughs>